Days Gone is coming out in just a few days, at least as of this recording, and early reviews are already out. So let's take a look at at least one review of Days Gone, an early unofficial review of Days Gone, to see how gamers really feel about Days Gone. The good. There's a good amount of missions, a bit some of them are repetitive, but those are your typical open world missions. Maps really big. At first I thought it was small, but it expands a lot. Has random encounters similar to Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption 2. Story missions are pretty varied though, and I'm doing everything as I go including side stuff. Continuing along here, crafting is similar to The Last of Us, gotta collect resources. Now we move on to the bad, and this is where it really gets... It's such a sad situation for not only the folks who, who were behind this game, because I think they had the right intentions, but ultimately, you know, for Sony as well. I mean, this is really the only game that they have to play on PS4 as of this recording and in the foreseeable future. So for this thing to come out and not be all that impressive, well, that's just... A sad reality, to be honest. The bad. Performance is a hit or miss. There's hitching and frames dropping. For the most part, it runs okay. This is on PS4 Pro, by the way, and I don't see any options to change this. And that's where they lost me right there. Clearly, this game needed more oomph out of this box, and the PS4 Pro, or the PS4, of course, ain't going to provide that. So what should have been done here? is they should have just waited until PS5, to be frank. You know, I know they like to kind of hype this game up and say, oh yeah, using the power of a modified Unreal Engine 4 and the PlayStation 4, and it's like, that's no way to freaking market this game in 2019 because the PS4, it ain't powerful. That's 2013 hardware. And clearly it shows. Imagine spending four or five years developing this game and releasing the game in the state that it's currently in. I mean, it is really buggy. I've seen screenshots. I've seen videos of just really, really bad looking stuff. I can't show it to you because obviously there's an embargo in place as of this recording. But you're just going to have to take not only my word, but this reviewer's word as well. Anyway, can be buggy at times too. Had my bike clip into a mountain which halted progress and got locked into rooms. Fast travel only works if you're by your bike. Luckily, they accounted for these bugs to give you multiple auto saves. Some bugs, bike clipping, audio loss, and getting progression locked in the Nero centers because I died and an auto saved with me inside while cutting power to the building, thus locking doors. Graphically, the game isn't the prettiest looking game, but I won't knock it down for that. Not all games need to push that envelope, which I very much disagree with, but nonetheless, let's continue on for the final thought here from this reviewer. And my like, you know, I don't hate it, but I also don't want to say it's continuing the trend of being a really, really good PS4 game. I say it's a good first attempt, and there's tons of room for a potential sequel and to improve upon. I say at best, it's an 8, and at worst, a 7. Average game that's definitely worth checking out eventually. I'm enjoying it but acknowledge it has flaws. And perhaps that's where a lot of people were when they when they were looking at this game, they were thinking, oh yeah, it's not gonna be a God of War, it's not gonna be a Horizon Zero Dawn, even though I disagree with those games being good, but nonetheless, you know, a lot of people have high expectations for exclusives on a PlayStation console. And it just seems like this one is underperforming in terms of what it is really truly bringing to the table, which is nothing new, by the way. Not only that, but you push aside really the content itself. You look at the game in terms of performance, in terms of how it runs and it's so unfortunate man because at one point they were literally hyping this game up saying it was going to really push the ps4 and i think actually i agree with that now because man i can only imagine how the game runs and i can only imagine how buggy this this experience truly is well fortunately y'all aren't going to have to wait that long as you're going to be able to get your hands on days gone fairly soon but there's a reason why the embargo is in place sony isn't nearly as confident in this as they would love you to believe that's why the reviews aren't dropping until the 20 25th, one day before the release of Days Gone. You look at a game like God of War, and the reviews were out for God of War about a week or so before the game actually hit the store shelves. Nonetheless, this game is still going to make big money, okay? There's nothing else out there to play, and for that reason alone, and since this is an exclusive to PlayStation, well, it's going to work well for them. You know what I mean? It really is. But I'd say, in some aspects, Days Gone is really a failed effort. A failed effort that could have been so much more. But maybe they deliberately designed it this way to kind of hook you in. Because maybe they already have a contract to make a sequel if it sells X amount. I guess time's going to tell. But nonetheless, that was Days Gone and the experience that it offers to you day one. Reviewers are already kind of slamming this game. And Sony, well, they're in shambles.